may kasabihan nga na kung nasaan ang armas, naroon din ang karahasan. Isa lamang ang Mindanao sa mga lugar kung saan matagal nang pinamumugara ng karahasan at terorismo. Sa mga nagdaang taon, ilang Muslim secessionist groups na rin ang nabuo rito dahil sa kanilang hangarin na magkaroon sila ng sariling otonomiya at pagpapasya. Kaugnay nito, ilang peace agreements na rin ang naganap sa pagitan ng mga moro at ng gobyerno ng Pilipinas upang matuldukan ang matagal ng hidwaan at sigalot sa Mindanao. At sa pagkakatatag ng Bangsamoro government at sa tulong na rin ng mga sundalo, nagkaroon ng pag-asa na matutuldukan na ang karahasan at terorismo sa lugar. The biggest security threat is here in Western Mindanao. The threat of terrorism emanating from here. And baseline ko lang dito, dito ang may pinakamalaking loose firearms. Loose firearms. Uh, so why are you saying dito ang pinakamarami, sir? We know when there are loose firearms, there are tools for violence, tools of violence. And if we cannot control this, this is the main tool that Saan galing ang mga loose firearms, sir? First is from, we can say that yung mga license na hindi na renew, loose na yun. Na yun okay. And hindi na na. Second, syempre, ito yung mga ginagamit ng mga those we are now having peace agreement, yung MNLF, MILF, still unauthorized to possess firearms, but because of the peace talks, uh, we have to manage it. And of course, human criminal and, and other lawless, lawless element. So, you go to statistics, basing on report of the PNP, uh, yun lang baseline nandito yung pinakamalaking loose firearm. And as I've always mentioned, with loose firearms, there's a bigger tendency to have violence. I hate to ask these questions. This is a very sensitive question about loose firearms. But uh, the reports before, that uh, galing din daw ito sa mga military. How would you answer that? Well, frankly speaking, some. Yes, kasi may nagsusurrender, may nakarecover kami ng property of the Republic of the Philippines. But these are, these are old, uh, mga 1970s probably, yung mga military operation noon. Alam mo naman yung extent of conflict in the 70s up to till the peace agreement was signed with the MNLF and MILF. The conflict there, talagang matindi exchange of uh, uh, firefights and barrel. Ang source lang naman yan, ang primary source is the government. So nakakuha. And also, we have some scalawags within the government na pilferage which uh, we are also looking at. Sabi nga, compared sa mga Luzon, Visayas, yung kinoconfront natin, CTG, ang mga barrel nila, 30. 20. Dito, yung grupo ng dating kaaway natin, by the hundreds. Where are we now in the, commis the decommissioning process? How many uh, firearms have been turned over? And uh, uh, are you satisfied with, with how we're doing it? Well, as to your question is, where are we now? We are on the third phase. And based on the phasing of the both panels, uh, we are on track. Now, if I'm satisfied what is more important right now is we don't have a conflict mm -hmm. with that group. Okay. We are in a peace agreement. MILF? MILF. Okay. Even MNLF. Okay. There is no, I can categorically say we are not in conflict with them. Mm -hmm. So this is the primary reason why I say we have a relative peace right now in my AOR for the past uh, three years. Past three years. Since they took over as uh, BTA members, uh, appointed BTAs, relative peace time. Uh, on the point of view of a military, you deal with them, you talk with them. Uh, what's your perception and, and uh, how would you describe their, their actions right now? Well, in any conflicting uh, groups, if you don't communicate, if you cannot bring your ideas or your thoughts across to them, then there's a problem. But right now, I can talk to them anytime, they hear me, I listen to them. So meaning, uh, we're there. We're, we have this confidence of working together. Okay. But again, it's not smooth sailing because there's a process that we, we talked. We, we, the government has uh, committed to for them. And 
I cannot discuss about that because it's uh, within the both panels. But what is important is we communicate. And remember, when you communicate, when you relay your thoughts, and he receive the other party listens and understands it, then possible conflict, possible source of uh, misunderstanding is avoided. Sir, um, how do you talk to them? Um, you know, they are the enemies of the government before. When you have these engagements, and uh, when there are disagreements, and of course some insistence on what they want, and uh, the military cannot give it, and uh, there, there are some processes that you know they cannot wait. How, how do you deal with them? Um, there are mechanisms, I believe, uh, and, and uh, is it effective? First is I talk to, with them with respect and total understanding of where they're coming from. And on my own foundation or my own mindset that they're my fellow Filipino. Pares tayong Pilipino dito. And we so just, that's the bottom line? Bottom line. Yun lang sinasabi. Uh, we're both Filipinos and we have a common interest. To uplift yung condition ng kababayan natin. There's this uh, committee, joint committee on the cessation of hostilities. Yes, there were reports in the past months na on the course of your operations against lawless elements, napapasok nyo yung area ng MILF at yes. uh, ng, ng kanilang grupo. And medyo may, merong encounters at uh, may, uh, may putuka na dapat hindi mangyari. Paano nangyari ito? Uh, wala ba kayong mechanism at uh, paano ba ang galawan dito? Well, I'll cite you two inc incidents. Though I wasn't the commander yet, last year, sometime November, in Basilan. Uh, it was a law Marami enforcement... Marami po bang MILF, sir, sa Basilan? Yes. Mga kampo? May mga defined camp. It was a law enforcement operation serving a warrant of arrest. With the PNP? With the PNP. And, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, law enforcement wala tong barrier eh. when it comes to law enforcement everybody's equal uh, there were coordination probably ground ground environment you know when things gets emotional uh, you tend to protect people uh, closest to you but the uh, good thing our mechanism came in and prevented a so may namatay uh, several but uh, not that hindi ganun katulad dati na maramihan uh, wounded there were uh, soldiers pati sa kabilang side but it's a big lesson for both parties so so when, when that happens um may hinahabol ba tayo like for example you file cases against them no uh, the mechanism comes in because we have the cch and this uh, the respective parties will come in and put a ceasefire and discuss what went wrong and then learn from it and uh -huh. hope it doesn't happen now can we file a case against them uh, because of the peace agreement we are uh, holding those uh, legal actions. But what about uh, if they have warrants of arrest and uh, they will join the government if they surrender? Tatanggapin ba natin or mawawala na yung kaso? Um, what's the stand so, now of uh, the government? For MILF members uh, with warrant of arrest, all of them, especially uh, those who are appointed in the BTA right now, they have this safe conduct. And this, we have this amnesty program. So, kahit mayroong warrant of arrest, yeah. hindi siya mahuli because of the safe yeah, conduct pass. And then, mayroon tayo ng setup of amnesty program for them, mm -hmm. which is part of the uh, mechanism natin. But is that fair, sir, to the victims of uh, what they did? Uh, alimbawa, may kaso silang murder, tapos hindi sila ulihin. Okay. Is that uh, a fair? It all depends on the case. What I meant by that is human cases nila on rebellion. Remember, we there was a mass filing of rebellion. So, Zamboanga seeds? 2008, Zamboanga seeds. Uh, I'm not very particular with the Zamboanga seeds. Shokun seeds? Yes. So, once it's in line of their movement, I think this is yung covered. But if there are cases of murder na specific sa isang tao, then I think that's a different story. I am just to uh, curious about. May mga kampo parang sila ngayon. Uh, MILF, even if it's outside Barm, may mga kampo sila. What's the arrangement with the the, the military, the AAP? What's the arrangement with the PNP? 
let me put this in uh, clarify things. Uh, for MILF, we have defined camps. Okay. And be, be based on our peace agreement, these defined camps will be turned into, will be transformed to a productive use of their lands, farming, and will make it productive. And second, we have to understand that their camp is community based. So, for example, uh, the much uh, well known Darapanan, Darapanan, Cap Darapanan, the center of MILF. It's basically a community, a uh, set of several barangays mm -hmm. clustered together and they call up. Similar than in other camps, it's a community. Even MNLF, uh, it's a community. It's not, it cannot be compared to a camp of the AFP okay. or the PNP that it is a standalone. Okay. And people there are not from that area, but from elsewhere, you just gather them to perform their mission as part of AFP. So very, very different. And there were instances when you visited for the turnover of many projects and programs. Do you know what? What did you see? Um, an anong mga developments na doon? Livelihood and other infra. Well, what is evident is there are infrastructure, uh, facilities being developed, and for example, uh, some Magindana where I had a long stint of my commandership. The mga houses doon dante. Uh, made out of sawali and kugo. Now it's cement and steel okay. material, concrete. So facilities, they're improving. And it's a manifestation that their needs are being addressed. Uh, ito, uh, from, from what I've uh, uh, experienced in our reporting before, uh, pwedeng ang isang MILF na na nasangkot sa isang kaso hinahabol ng ng AFP pupunta dun sa BIFF or pupunta sa kanong grupo and then sa gabi eto sila sa araw to na mga grupo um ganon siya kahirap sir very difficult uh, kasi una sa mga kapwa Pilipino natin yan so I always ask my sub commanders always check the motivation or the reason why they are joining this group. Is it really for ideology? Mm -hmm. Is it for opportunity? Or is it because they just want to survive? Mm -hmm. so when you check or when you really do the profile, mm -hmm. then you'll understand uh, really life there is very difficult. Kaya nga lagi yung sinasabi in my discussion with uh, our the members of the Bangsamoro government right now, what we really need in this area is new opportunities for the Bangsamoro people. Okay. Ibig sabihin, job opportunity, uh, livelihood opportunity. Because if not, the only opportunity they will have is to get hold of a gun and try to, to live with a gun. Issue one-on-one. -on -one.